everybody, it's Suzanne. I wanted to check in with you, or I guess take a clip really quick before we get a uh, tropical storm forward. supposed to be a hurricane, maybe. Um, and pull up. We have our last minute prep. We really didn't need last minute prep. We just kind of feel like we need to go buy something during a uh, right before a storm. But we have our windows boarded up. We have uh, special hurricane shutters and I'll take you around the front to see them. I'm in the pantry and um, I have a little rabbit scratch right here from where I was breeding the rabbits um, yesterday Labor Day and one of the rabbits she's my favorite and a little more gentle so I was lifting her to put her in the cage and I was maybe not as careful with her as I should have been and she scratched me so I don't have a funny weird uh, mustachio it is a scratch I'm in the pantry here and I'm just gonna tilt the phone so you can see all right okay so we try to have year-round everything we need to get through a couple of weeks now the pantry this is garden Produce. So my goal with all the things, not all the things, but uh, many of the things that I grow is to try to get enough to last the whole year. And um, so I got pretty close this year with green beans, definitely got close with peppers. So I didn't have to worry about picking up any food. We also have um, rice and uh, canned meat and all kinds of things. Uh, terrible, terrible. Let's see if I can move my finger the right way. Uh, ramen Blech. but the kids and the husband love ramen even though it's poison so uh, so some simple things where's the simple things you can do if you know uh, bad weather's hitting first you can make sure that your all your dishes are clean you can make sure that you have paper plates and plastic cups and paper towels and plenty of toilet paper uh, if you have a garden you want to go out to your garden and get anything that is still So the peppers, the peppers are still going. So go out to your garden, get anything that's out there that's left on the um, plants. Make sure that your dirty clothes are washed. Um, what else? Oh, so if you have a lot of water, uh, which you always should have plenty of water, I think FEMA recommends that you keep a gallon per person per day for a minimum of three days. At all times, not just during hurricane season, not just cold weather season, at all times. So, if you feel like you're overreacting with prepping, a lot of times you aren't. They also tell you to have two weeks of non-perishable food, you need to have gas. Um, anyhow, back to the water. This is what I do with my waters. I don't keep them in here year-round, but I will throw them in there um, if there's a storm coming. And you'll notice there's not, this isn't full. There's a little bit of things up here, but most of those that say rabbit on them are just rabbit stock bones. And I purposefully like my meat in the freezer to be low this time of the year because it is storm season. It is hurricane season. I don't want to have large amounts of perishable items that are frozen. So over the winter, I stock up on my meat and then I try to consume it throughout the summer so that I'm at an all-time low by the time fall comes. Like I said, I do have canned meat, so it's not like I'm totally out. Uh, fill up your gas tank, make sure you have batteries and flashlights, and you should really have all those things in place. You should just be topping off. And the emergency, last minute emergency preps I was talking about earlier was a case of beer. So it wasn't anything important that we absolutely 
needed to get through. Uh, it's just a last minute thought. And uh, I guess that's about it. So I'll take a clip when the storm is over. Uh, I put the ducks up, I put them in the shop. They were in the, what I call the meat wagon. It's a portable meat coop. Uh, so that was not going to be a good option. So that's why they're in the shop. They're in a little animal, well, a large animal carrier actually. Uh, a kennel, a dog kennel in the shop. So they'll be nice and safe in there. And uh, the goats and the cows, hopefully they'll be fine. Uh, didn't take any special precautions with them other than making sure the water is full. Is full. Uh, where we live, we do have a well. It is operated on electricity. So if we don't have electricity, we don't have running water. So we have to take a couple of extra measures to just make sure that we're prepared for that. Thanks, and uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. I'm outside. It's the day after the storm. Uh, so far we've gotten, well, we still kind of are getting the storm, the outer bands. But so far we've gotten three and a quarter of an inch, uh, so three inches and a quarter of rain. I emptied the rain gauge, and we'll see how much more we get today. Uh, when the bands come through, and this happened yesterday too, You'll get a little gust of wind and you'll get a little bit of rain or a lot of bit of rain and then there's a break uh, and it, that happens at the beginning of the storm and at the end of the storm during the middle of the storm um, during the middle of the storm it's just constant rain and wind so take you out to the garden and show you how that's doing and then we'll take a look at the animals everything did everything did fine so And I'm going to put links about emergency preparedness, basic emergency preparedness, in the comment section below. All right, so here we go. Here's the garden. Um, I didn't leave that out here. That would be a wind hazard. And I came out here for about 15 minutes. I took a little break from my work. Um, for my reports and I came out here for about 15 minutes and planted some kale. I'm going to take this video and then I'll be inside for the next several hours doing some more reports for work. I am fortunate enough uh, that I have a work laptop and the ability to log in remotely and work. Uh, which wouldn't be any good if I didn't have any power, but I do have power. We got so lucky. This morning when we got up down the street you could hear um, you could hear generators, and then up the street you could hear generators, so we did get very lucky. Alright, so I did have horse, uh, composted horse manure out here, but I put the hay down too. And I used a trick that I found on YouTube, and I can't remember the, U the YouTuber or the guy, but he farms, he's been on a bunch of different channels, he farms in Maine, I think, during the summer, and then Florida during the winter and it's funny the basic no-brainer tips you pick up from people that you never thought of but he said put your seedlings plant your seedlings through your mulch which is kind of common sense if you're using wood chips but if you're putting hay down I'm almost I'm embarrassed to say for the last decade I put my seedlings in first and then I put the hay around them and it's such a pain so I did it his way this time. I put the hay down first and then I plugged my seedlings in. Putting the hay down, uh, even though I have compost under there, did something really important for, uh, for where I live. We get really, really heavy, intense rainfall with very large drops and that's because of where we're located on the planet. Um, if you live on the west coast, you're going to get light, misty rains and it's because you have cool ocean currents coming up. Where I live, we have warmer ocean currents, so we get the same kind of rain that they get in India and uh, Southeast Asia. We get those heavy, fat, monsoon-type rainfall events, and that can displace a lot of soil, and it can splash it up onto your plants. So, by putting this hay down, one of the things that it does is it protects the soil from the raindrop impact, and to some extent, it also protects the seedlings uh, from wind, from rain. Now over here we have an issue, and I've noticed this before with drainage. Um, 
there's just a lot of water there and it takes a long time to drain out so I've been meaning to come in with a pitchfork and fix that right here you can see a rack line all right going all the way down that's where the water got up to now you don't see any plants here but I did put out I did put out carrots uh, I put out carrot seeds and the reason why I put that heavy layer of hay over it is because I knew we were getting these storms and I did not want the seeds to be washed away. So after this bulk of rain moves through, um, probably sometime tomorrow evening I'll come out here and I'll pull up all this hay. You don't want to leave that down because it will choke out the seedlings. But I did just plant those a couple days ago. so. Uh, everything else did okay. The zinnias got blown over but that's fine. Um, I had picked the peppers yesterday. That wasn't a big deal. Uh, the ducks, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure what kind of winds this the meat wagon would hold up to. I think we didn't get over 65 or 70 mile an hour um, yesterday evening or early in the morning. It's not a big deal, but uh, just in case, I had put the ducks in here and I've still got this stuff out. But I put the ducks in here and I moved them with the dolly all the way back to the shop. So this morning, first thing I did is I got up and I brought them back out and I gave them a nice, a nice meal and they're, they're full and happy now. Come on, Jack. Now the other structures in the backyard have already been through a storm event where I think we got maybe some gusts that were about 70 miles an hour. Um, I guess it was Irma. It didn't hit us directly, but we did get some. Uh, I've got something on my screen. Okay, sorry, I had to get rid of it. Um, anyhow, I think it was Irma that we got some wind from that. It wasn't a direct hit, but we did get 60 or 70 miles an hour. So I knew that these structures back here could handle it. So I wasn't really um, freaking out about that. Uh, we still have our storm shutters up. And with all the activity in the Atlantic, we're actually thinking about just um, keeping them up. <laughs> kind of kind of like the people that keep the Christmas lights up all year to avoid having to re-put them up. Uh, we're going to do that with the storm shutters. We'll probably take a couple of panels out so that we get a little bit of light in the house. But those take a couple of hours to put up. And in order to get that done, a lot of times we have to use a uh, vacation to come home early so we can get that prepared. It's just a pain. It'll be nice if it's already up. All right, so the poultry did fine. Um, all that's still intact. We did have some, have some lids blow off of waters, but that's not a big deal. I had, I had totally forgotten that um, the roof on this one was not screwed on. So it did blow off and these poor bunnies got rained on. I've got two in there, but those are not breeders. Um, or I was thinking about maybe using them for breeders, but not necessarily. So hopefully they don't get sick. I mean, they weren't injured or anything, but that, I'm sure that was very stressful for them. Uh, the goats did fine. They're all doing great. They make lots of noise when mama comes out because they want a, a snack. The cows did fine. Um, I have been waiting for it to dry out for like a week um, so that I could really clean out their area. The inside of the barn is fine where the milking equipment is, but it's the area around the hay that's just got a lot of manure that I need to clean up. But it is soaking, sopping wet, it's super heavy, and it just makes more sense to wait for it to dry out. But we've been getting one to two inches a week for the past I want to say the past five or six weeks, so we are totally, totally drenched. Um, all right, so that's it. That's basically my place. Um, some, you know, little down limbs. Oh, a dove did fly into one of our doors and become injured, and um, Brandon saw it when he got up this morning. It wasn't there later, so I guess it probably went somewhere to die or maybe... Maybe it recovered and survived, I don't know, but, um, but yeah, so that's it, and I'm going to go back inside now, and I'm going to uh, get some of my work done, and I hope you guys have a great week, and stay safe, and please hit like and subscribe, I really appreciate it, thanks so much, bye.